Okay. <clears throat> the amount of coffee, this is for a the central, central limit theorem. The, uh, chapter 7. The amount of coffee that people drink per day is normally distributed with a mean of 17 ounces and a standard deviation of 6 ounces. Okay. 33 people selected. All right. The one thing you have to know is that the, the distribution um, of the X, which is the population, okay, which is simply the information given, 17 ounces uh, for the mean, 6 ounces for the standard deviation, okay? That's very simple. It should be 100% part A every time, just goes there. Whatever the mean is given goes there. Whatever the standard deviation goes there. However, now... For the sampling distribution, which is designated by X bar, the mean that's given is still the same, okay? It's still 17. However, the standard deviation is given by this equation. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution is the standard deviation of the population, which is given in the problem, divided by the square root of N. This is also known as the standard error. So if you ever, and there's future problems actually in chapter nine, I believe, nine, yeah, that ask you questions, what is the standard error? Standard error is different from the standard deviation. The standard error takes the standard deviation and divides it by the square root of the sample size, okay? So going back to our problem, so <clears throat> then what I would do is I would take uh, um, actually, why don't we do that in Excel? Okay, I'll show you how to do that in Excel. Why is this? Okay, let's just go ahead and do that in Excel. So the standard deviation, you can do it on your calculator, but I would, I'm going to show you why I prefer you to do it in Excel of sampling distribution, okay? Always hit equal, okay? All right, let's put the mean up here. The mean, so I remember what it is for future problem. The mean is, okay, to save time, I set everything up in Excel, I paused it. So if we go back to the problem, again, I need to find out what this number is. The standard deviation of the <clears throat> uh, sampling distribution, that's what this number is right here. That's what you're gonna enter right here. And we're gonna get this answer watch in Excel. And you can do this on your calculator too, but I'm gonna show you how to do this in Excel and I'm gonna show you why. The standard deviation of the sample is remember um, sampling distribution is the standard deviation of the uh, population divided by the square root of the sample size and is always the sample size. So uh, um, you could do that on your calculator, but in Excel it would be the standard deviation of the population, which is six, divided by the square root. SQ, you always have to hit equal when you're doing the calculation, QRT, and if this pops up here, the square root of what? The sample size, which is, oh, I forget what the sample size is. How many? 33. Oh, it's right here, 33, okay? And then you have to close the parentheses, okay? So uh, 1.04466, whatever, okay? All right? Um, four, five, okay, if you round it to the places they did, okay? All right, so now that's the standard deviation of the sample distribution, okay? So now the next question is, what is the probability that I randomly select one person and it's between 16.6 .6 and 17.1 ounces a day, okay? Well, one person, the standard deviation, we use the population standard deviation because what's the square root of one? Okay, sample size is one, n is one. What's the square root of one? One. What's the population standard deviation divided by one? Population standard deviation. So for one sample, we do the same thing we did last chapter, except, you know, we just you, we do exactly the same thing we did for last chapter for the probability of less than, uh, so to get the probability between 16.6 .6 and 17.1, we do, <clears throat> less than 16.6, .6, probability less than 17.1, and we subtract the one from the other, just like we did last chapter. And how did we do that last chapter? We used the 
we lose formulas, more function statistical, norm.dist. Make sure you use norm.dist, not this one, not norm.s.dist, norm.dist, there's a big difference, okay? And your x, which is 16.6, .6. the mean is 17, standard deviation, we're doing 6 this time, and the cumulative is always 1, okay? So the probability less than 16.6 .6 is 0.47, etc. okay? Now we do the same thing for 17.1. So, so far we're not doing any different than we did last chapter, and hopefully it wasn't that long ago you remember. Okay, norm.dist, all right, <clears throat> and x value is 17.1, the mean is 17, standard deviation is 6, cumulative always 1, okay, is that. So now the difference is the answer. You could go ahead in your calculator and do this minus this, but I'm going to do it in Excel. I'm going to hit equals this number minus this number, and there's my answer, 0 0.0332, when you round it to four decimal places, 0 0.0332, okay? All right, now we're going to do the same exact thing, no different for this one, except since we're using 33 people, we're going to use the standard deviation that we calculated up here. We're going to use that standard deviation, okay? And again, in Excel, and this is why I calculated in Excel, because I'm just going to grab that, okay? For 33 samples, norm.dist again, <clears throat> norm.dist, x is 16.6, the mean is 17. Now, the standard deviation, I'm going to put my cursor in there. I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm going to go, why would I rewrite it? It's right here. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that cell. You can rewrite it if you want to, but I'm trying to teach you a little bit about Excel and efficiency here. All right, so there's your standard deviation. You can see it's calculated right over here. It's the same thing. All you have to do is click in the cell, and again, all I did was click in the cell, and then just go ahead and click on that, and it will give you that answer. And the cumulative, again, is always 1. So less than 16.6 .6 for the 33 samples is that, 0 0.3509, I guess. So for 17.1, again, do the same thing. More functions, statistical, um, norm.dist, and again, the x is 17.1, mean 17, standard deviation. Again, I'm going to go grab that one because that's the one we're using. Cumulative, always 1. And again, I could go in my calculator and do this one minus this one, but I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to hit equals. You always have to hit equals when you're doing a thing. When you're doing a calculation, equals this number, cell, whatever's in that cell minus the number in that cell. And there's going to be your answer, 0.1873 when you round, 0.1872, okay. Um, okay, good. It took 0.1873. Uh, they allowed for some rounding errors, so they allowed, good. So <clears throat> uh, 0.1873 is your answer, okay. All right. It does not have to be normal, okay? Now, for the IQR, remember, for Q1, now we're going to say, what is the uh, 25th percentile? What is the 75th percentile? Q1 is the 25th percentile. Q3 is the 75th percentile. And then we're going to subtract Q3 minus Q1 to get our answer, okay? Now, to get percentiles, uh, <clears throat> given the X value, Okay. I mean, given, given, the percent, given the percentile, what's the X value? We're going backwards, what we did here. Here, I gave you the X value. value. I found the probability. Now, I give you the probability. Q1 basically is 0.25. I'm going to find the X value. We use a different um, for Q1. We're going to label that Q1. We're going to use a different formula for this time. It's going to be right below the one we just did. We're going to use norm.inv this time. Norm.inv. Okay, right below the one we just did. Now you're going to give the probability. Again, probability is 0.25, all right? The mean is 17, okay? And the standard deviation, they asked for, they asked for it for the 33 coffee drinkers, right? So since they asked for the 33 coffee drinkers, I'm going to use the probability that we calculated in the sampling distribution, which is this one right here, okay? All right? So there it is, 16.2955, okay? 
16.2955, okay? We do the same thing. We use 0.75 for Q3. So Q3 is 0.75. So we go formulas, more functions, statistical, norm.inv again, probability 0.75, mean is 17, standard deviation. Go ahead and grab that, okay? And there's that answer for Q3, 17.7045, okay? And of course, the IQR is the difference between the two. So again, I'm gonna hit equals, this minus this, and enter. And there's our IQR, and uh, 1.408, uh, 1.4090. 1.4090, 1.409, okay? All right, hope that helps.